Hello, my name is Bill Goebel. We're going to do a little educational event about failure rate data, and I'll give you the whole story here in a four-part session on getting good failure rates. I'm a big fan of the cartoonist Scott Adams, who's created the Dilbert series of cartoons. And believe it or not, failure rates are one of his subjects. Why? I will explain as we go through the seminar. Just remember, I said the data is totally accurate. I work for Exida, a customer-focused company with three primary groups. We have an enterprise tool group, which provides engineering software for systems and OEM manufacturers, a certification and assessment group, and a lifecycle system services group. I'm proud to say that Exit has grown into a global solution provider, and it's really neat to be able to see offices all over the world. The certification group is growing too. A study done by ARC in 2015 indicated Exit was by far the world's leader in functional safety certifications. Even in the logic solver category that started over 15 years ago, Exeter had leadership position at 44% of the market. The main competitors, three different TUV companies, only added up to 56%. One of the problems with the study, though, is it wasn't really clear about the 56%. So in 2018, the study was updated and the charts were more detailed to show the different companies. And look at this chart. Exida is clearly the global market leader in functional safety certifications for the process industries. One of our groups does engineering tools. There's really two sets. A good set of engineering tools designed for system analysis. And I mention these because they use failure rates. There's a tool to gather up failure rate data. So the tools are relevant to this discussion. OEM tool sets are used to predict failure rates in new uh, automation devices. I'm also very proud that Exida does a lot of research into failure rate data and probabilistic analysis methods. We publish our data. I'm proud that we have published a majority of industrial references for automation safety and cybersecurity. In this series, we're going to do four seminars on failure rates, starting with design optimization and what is a failure rate. Then we'll talk about failure rate estimation, a technique for providing such valuable data. Failure rate prediction, another technique for providing failure rate data. And finally, Let's do some comparisons, and we'll talk about a combination of methods that gives optimal results. Let's head right into part one. We're going to talk about non-believers. Yes, there are such people. Those who don't believe in failure rate data, maybe like Scott Adams, the cartoonist. We'll talk about safety design optimization. I'll give you a definition of failure rates and we'll talk about how to calculate failure rates, at least a very brief introduction. One Sunday morning, I opened my Sunday paper, and there was another Dilbert cartoon about failure rate data. And I looked at it and said, ah, Scott Adams believes that the way we generate failure rate data is to type random numbers into a spreadsheet and then we're done. That's not really the way it works, and we're going to explain that to you in these uh, educational event sessions. But it does show you, in fact, that there are non-believers, people who don't really trust or believe in the value of this methodology. However, in spite of those people, there are many more who understand the value of using 
calculations and analysis to optimize designs. We make trade-offs between false trip rates and safety. We make trade-offs between life cycle cost and capital expense. That can all be done using these analysis techniques. But this optimization and the strong economic benefit requires realistic failure rate data. And when you don't have good data, watch out. I remember attending a um, chemical company safety meeting in Germany. And one of the fellows put up his hand and said, you know, this failure rate stuff is all garbage. Garbage? And I said, well, why do you think that? I said, well, I just did a calculation that said I could use one valve in a SIL-3 design. But I know you can't use just one valve. You've got to have two. Therefore, I conclude that all your failure rate data, your whole methodology is just worth nothing. And I said, let me see your data. And it was kind of very low failure rate data. And I said, if you do a calculation, let's do a sample calculation with this data. Ah, you need two valves for SIL-3. And he says, oh no, your method's no good. When you use garbage data, the method is no good. Remember that. The failure rate is the foundation of many different metrics, including your PFH and your PFD average and your SFF and all the metrics that you see in the functional safety standards live on a foundation of failure rate data. Therefore, realistic failure rate data is again essential, including trip rates and risk reduction factors and life cycle cost. All of these things are impacted and can be calculated with good failure rate data. Now, what's a failure rate? Uh, a book I recommend, which I co-authored, gives a good definition and a very detailed description of failure rate, but what it boils down to is instantaneous failure rate, lambda t, is failures per unit time divided by the quantity of units exposed to the stress events. Now, I'll show you a quick example of that. Here's a spreadsheet we use at Exeta where we enter the number of failures reported, we enter the number of operational hours, unit operational hours, and the first thing we do is a simple point estimate of the failure rate. We get 1.23 e to the minus 6. 6, 7, 8, 9, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 1,230 fits. Failures in time. We can also apply a statistical confidence factor, although 100 samples is pretty good. And so we can calculate the upper confidence limit failure rate of 1.29 e to the minus 6. And you can see the number did not go up very much because we have a, a, a good strong quantity of, of failures. Now, the problem with this is there's a lot of assumptions in here. This sheet is used when evaluating manufacturer's warranty data, which we'll talk about in a little bit. There's all kinds of assumptions here and there, all over the methodology. And given all the different assumptions, depending on which assumptions we make, we can change the results significantly. So in part one, we talk about Non-believers, don't throw away the method because you have bad data. We talk about the value of using these methods in safety design optimization, including the economic benefits. We've given you a definition of the failure rates, and we've showed you a brief failure rate calculation. There's a whole lot more exciting stuff to come. So thank you for attending part one. Stay tuned for parts two, three, and four. Bye-bye.